There's so much negativity around World of Tanks Blitz, but really, is it such a bad game? Well, let's have a look. Yeah, hello again everybody and welcome back to Fuji's Blitz. Now, this is the first video I've done for a long time and it really comes out because of a coffee chat that I did over the weekend. Now, I do coffee chats every Saturday and without fail, there's always a lot of criticism about the game. Be that criticism, the poor MM, or the bad RNG, or the ghost shots, or whatever. There is criticism. And in a lot of respects, yes, it's okay to have criticism, and a lot of it is warranted. But, in a lot of other respects, there are a lot of positives about this game that we all miss. And that is what we're going to be looking at today. I'm not saying the game is perfect. It's not. But then again, tell me a game that is perfect and you'll struggle to find one. But let's deal with some of those elephants in the room first. MM. Now, okay, MM is an algorithm that we truly don't know how it works. Um, it's a closely guarded secret. But in its basic premise, all that MM does is allocate tanks according to their class and their tier. They don't look at your battle count, they don't look at how much win rate you've got. So sometimes guys in random battles you're gonna have bad players and you're gonna have good players. That's just the way the dice is rolled. Hence the reason why if you have a look at encounter battles it shows little dice because it really is random. It's as straightforward as that. And we can bemoan the MM as much as we like. But the fact of the matter is, it doesn't take into account your skill level, nor does it take into account your experience. Just your tank and just your class. The other thing you've got to remember about MM is that you are going to get battles with inexperienced new players and players who are just clueless and, have just n and players who just can't play the game properly. But this is a game that's not elitist guys it's open for all skill levels all abilities all age groups and all demographics so just be mindful that the person behind the tank who you think is a complete clueless player and a complete muppet you don't know that person's situation that person could be somebody who is suffering from an illness or they have a disability or they, you know, they, 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 there could be something that they're struggling with and they enjoy the game because it gives them relief. So don't be so harsh on people and don't expect everybody to have the same skill level as you. But on the same token, don't expect that your skill level is higher than it really is. So just be mindful of that. This game is open for all. So that's basically MM. The other main issue that people always seem to have is RNG and ghost shells. Now, I'd love to be able to sit here and explain to you how RNG and ghost shells work, but I just have no clue, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, they're just part of the game. It's annoying, yes. It's annoying that shots bounce. It's annoying that they seem to go through objects as if they're invisible. It's annoying when you think you've done a great shot and all you get and you get a voice telling you that went right through him and it does absolutely nothing. It's part of the game, unfortunately, and it is annoying. And I'd love to be able to sit here and explain to you the intricacies of how, why and when these things happen. But I have no idea myself. So that is a valid, valid concern. But to... Do those two things really add up to make the game so bad? Well, no, in my opinion. And this is what I want to get to. I want to get to the positives behind the game. I don't want to focus on those negatives. So one of the first things I want to look at is this. What do we get for our buck? Well, we get 
a free game for all intensive purposes and a free game that gives us over 400 tanks 433 tanks to be exact of which 220 are fully researchable you don't need to buy them 119 are premium tanks you do need to buy those and 94 are collectible so there are more researchable free tanks then there are premium and collectors combined. But it's not just about free tanks. Now this is an article written for the top 10 tank games for PC. And it's for PC. World of Tanks PC comes in at number two. But what is more interesting is not the fact that the main platform, i.e. World of Tanks PC, comes in at number two, but what comes in at number two. Five. That's right, it's Blitz. Blitz is seen as one of the best games for tanks. And the thing is, this is a mobile game. It was never meant to be, per se, a PC game. It was a condensed, more simplified version of the main game. So for a mobile game to make it in number five on a PC game list is pretty impressive. But let's not stop there. Let's see what the industry says of the best tank games for Android devices. And look at that. At number one is World of Tanks Blitz. It is by far the best mobile tank game you can get on the market. This game has so much that we take for granted, like maps, like the tanks. There's so much, guys. Taking into consideration this is a game that was developed primarily for your smartphone or your tablet, not the PC, boy do you get some fantastic stuff. I mean, one, you get 30 maps. That's not even considering maps such as the lunar map for gravity mode or the wastelands map that we once had, which therefore brings it to 32 maps. You also have outstanding graphics, seriously. You tell me a better mobile game that has graphics, with the exception of Eve Echoes, akin to this. I mean, the graphics on this are stupendous. Look how realistic the buildings look, the terrain looks. I mean, it's just a beautiful, beautiful game. Couple into that, you have got, for all intensive purposes, 14 different types of tanks on the battlefield from tank destroyers which can vary to light tanks which again vary medium tanks which vary heavy tanks which vary they all have different penetration different damage different mobility different armor profiles there is so much in this game that we really do take for granted okay it's annoying that we have ghost shells Okay, it's annoying that we have a team that, well, for all intents and purposes, are clueless. But that's detracting from the main purpose of the game. And the main purpose of this game is to have fun and to be aesthetically pleased whilst having fun. And I think Blitz does that in spades. Not only that, but this game actually gives us scenarios whereby it can suit almost everybody from random battles which suits those rushing to lectures in, in grabbing a game between lectures or classrooms or between meetings or waiting for a date or whatever the, the, the thing is to those who are ultra serious and are professionals and roll out in tournaments there is a game mode to suit every person out there now, we all bemoan the, the game modes. For example, we bemoan random. Now, if your aim in life is to get that very high light blue or purple win rate, then unfortunately you have to play random. And it is the look of the draw, guys. But here is the kicker. If you are skillful enough, it doesn't matter if your team is poor, you should, in theory, have enough skill to increase your damage and, over time, increase your win rate. 
Now, if you don't do that over time, then maybe your skill level isn't to the level that you realistically think it is. Because I know players with very high 60s to 70 win rates with thousands of battles, and they still manage to go out there and maintain their win rate. And that's exactly what encounter mode is for. It is there for you to get your damage up and to do your win rate, but it's also there to have a bit of fun. It's a random battle. Now mixed into a random mode, there are two game modes. There's encounter and supremacy. So you've got two game modes in one to suit anybody. If you want your win rate up, play random. If you're rushing from lecture to lecture and you've got a spare 10 minutes, play random. That's the idea behind it. If you're a little bit more serious, however, and you really want to test your skill, play ratings. Now, ratings, I fully agree, is not ideal or perfect at the moment, mainly because there's no win rates or damage count given to ratings. It's just the way it goes. And you get a lot of people in there because it doesn't affect win rate or damage, grinding tanks. And sometimes ratings is a bit hit and miss. But it's it and miss because the player base and the community has yet have not fully embraced it. Had the game, had the, had the community embraced it, then gold league players would be playing against gold league players. Platinum against platinum, diamond against diamond, and so on and so on. But because hardly anybody plays ratings, it doesn't work that way currently, unfortunately. But if you are serious, and not too serious, then ratings is for you. And again, it comes in both encounter and supremacy. If, however, you are ultra serious, and you really take this game seriously, then tournaments are for you. I've just been streaming the pro tournaments. These are the best players in the game. And these are serious, serious guys. They take the game seriously. They look at the strats. They look at the meta of the tanks. And tournaments really are for the ultra serious player. I mean, those who play at the top levels of tournaments, the pro players, they understand the tanks better than us mere mortals. They understand the parameters of the tank, the mobility, what it's going to pen, where it's going to pen, what's going to do the most damage. They know the positions on the maps. They play the game like a game of chess. I mean, this is for the serious, serious player at this level. And it's not just the pro tournaments. We have so many quick tours that guys can play. Now, if you are that serious about this game, tournaments really are for you. Play your random battles, play your ratings battles, and then play, what is it, three days a week, four days a week, Sundays, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, play your tournaments. You don't even have to roll out in tier 10. You can roll out in tier six or even tier eight. You can really enjoy the game. You can play it with seven people that you know, and you can communicate with them. So you remove all that annoyance that you have with lack of communication and a lack of understanding in the team in normal random and ratings mode. You can play as a team and really be effective. That for me is just something amazing. So we have therefore so far three game modes to cover three different styles. But then we also have fun mode and that is things like this, gravity. We have a gravity mode that comes along every now and then. We have mad games, we have uprising and we have realistic. Now these games don't affect any of your stats. They are just there for mindless fun, entertainment value, roll out and have a giggle, to just enjoy it for what it is, a game, and to play it for what it is, like an arcade game. I mean, it's 
It's a great, great way to de-stress and loosen up. But again, some people just take it ultra seriously and it's not meant to be taken seriously. Uprising, gravity, mad games are even realistic to an extent. They're not serious game modes, guys. They're a bit of fun. So we've got four, four game modes there within which there's also two other game modes. So we have random with its encounter and supremacy. We have rate for, for your fair weather player as long as well as your serious player, semi-serious player for all types of players. We then have ratings for those players who really want to improve their skill level. We then have tournament for the ultra serious player. And then we have these one-off fun modes for those who want a bit of a giggle. But that's still not all this game has to offer. You can also have a blank canvas, which is the training room, where you can do almost anything you wish. And at the moment on the screen, you're seeing a tournament that was arranged for two against two. But the world is your oyster. Your canvas is utterly blank. You can do almost anything in a training room. And the best part is you're not going to be wasting credits on shells that you fire because it's free in a training room. So you can do so much with this game. You can go into training rooms and test out the tanks with your mates, or you can play stupid things like humans versus zombies, or even serious tournaments like this one, which was two against two. This is a game that has so much to offer us. Regardless of our skill level, regardless of what we, our intention is in the game, there is so much we can do with it. And the problem is not wargaming, and it's not the game, it's actually us, the players and the community. We generally focus on the negatives without even bothering to look at the positives. Which is a shame, because there are so many positives in this game. I'm not going to lie to you. Of course there are negatives. Of course there are things that frustrate everybody. Of course there are things that could be done better. But as I said at the beginning, tell me a game that is perfect and I will eat my hat. No game is perfect. What we get in Blitz is a good game. It's a great game, in fact. It's got great graphics. It's got 30 maps. It's got 430 tanks. It's got good five different game modes for all intensive purposes. It's got a lot going for it. And over time, hopefully, the little annoyances, the high ping, the RNG, ghost shells, and stuff like that will dissipate. But don't be a detractor all the time. Look at the bright side of things. Every cloud has a silver lining and negativity just breeds negativity. Take the positives from the game. Don't just focus on the negatives. And just remember, this is a game that has a scenario to suit all different types. Be you a fair weather player just likes jumping in and blowing stuff up to the ultra serious gamer. It has all types of scenarios and situations to please almost every single demographic. So, just remember, there are some good parts to this game. It's not all doom and gloom. Anyway, I've been Fujit. That has been my take on World of Tanks Blitz. It's not as bad as people make out. And it's not a game just filled with negatives or negativity. There are a lot of positive things about this game. By all means, I'd love to hear your comments below. Um, I'd like to know, what is it that you like about the game? Because you know what? So many people still play this game, regardless of the negativity that seems to surround it. So there's got to be something that you yourself enjoy about this game. I know I enjoy the game still, I, I do, um, okay, it gives me a full range of emotions. I love it, I hate it, I'm frustrated, 
I'm absolutely invigorated by it. It, cap it encapsulates me. It gives me a full range of emotions. And that's just in one battle, to be fair. I mean, I, I, I feel fantastic when I get an ace. And I feel absolutely pants when I do zero damage. It can make you laugh. It can make you cry. And it can put a massive smile on your face. But one thing it does do, for me anyway, it alleviates some of the monotony and tension that I have in real life. It's lovely to immerse yourself in a game when all you do is blow stuff up. And I love that. I think it's great. And you know what? I can do it with in less than seven minutes. That for me is fantastic. However, as I said, there are negatives. Of course there are. No game is perfect. So I'd love to hear your comments, as I said. If you haven't yet pressed subscribe, please do so. Why not? What have you got to lose? You're not losing anything. It costs you nothing. I'm not asking you to give me a million dollars. I'm asking you to give me a, a little bit of a click and a subscription. By all means, if you like the video, press the like button. It's the one that's got the thumbs up rather than the thumbs down. Don't forget, I've also got YouTube membership. At the moment, I do a lot more streams than I do videos. I get that, but the videos will start to come again. Uh, despite the fact that I still will be doing lots of streaming, especially on the Asia and EU servers, where I'll join in with the members and the subscribers and we'll have some fun tunes and stuff like that. Furthermore, I'm hoping to get back onto the NA server very, very soon. You can also, if you wanted to, become a Patreon. But all these are your calls, guys. So until the next time, I'm going to leave you with Elias Sucks on the NA server rolling out in his grill where he does insane, insane amounts of damage. This is number one in the Hall of Fame. It deserved a video all on its own merit. Unfortunately, he did it during tour season and I didn't have the time to put a video together. I have played this replay a few times during the tournaments, but hey, it deserves a little bit more recognition just for the sheer amazingness of the game. So I leave you with Elia Sucks playing here in the grill. It's beautiful to watch. Again, I've been Fujit. Thank you for watching my video and hopefully you will subscribe and I will catch you all again soon. Until then, remember the golden rule, guys. Stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because that's really what it is all about, having fun and being happy. Mm -hmm.